something different. van trailer. We're taking it into British Columbia. I'm in Calgary, Alberta right now. Gotta go to about eight hours west to Kamloops, British Columbia. Got my first drop there. My second drop is in Williams Lake, British Columbia. A little bit further into BC. So let's get going. It's gonna be a scenic day. It's a beautiful day to go into the mountains too. So the Big Rig Expo is happening on Saturday. It's Thursday today here in Calgary. That's why I'm taking this load into the mountains. It's keeping me in the area. So we're going to deliver these tomorrow, most likely. And then, uh, or maybe even this afternoon. I might get cam loops off today yet if I hurry. I'm going to try, but we'll definitely get them both unloaded tomorrow. And uh, then we can rush back here for Friday night. And then Saturday, i got to be at the expo here in Calgary. just to grab a coffee. We already fueled yesterday, so we don't gotta waste our time doing that now. So we fueled the truck yesterday, we fueled ourselves right now, got our coffee. Now we are headed to the Rocky Mountains. Are you guys ready? I've been able to go see the Rocky Mountains three times this year already. Now all we gotta do is get out of Calgary. But when did Calgary get so much traffic? When did this happen? All right, so like I've been saying, uh, we're looking for owner operators for our motorsport division. Motorsport division would look like this. This is a motorsport trailer. You can see it has that belly box on the bottom that holds extra components and stuff. Extra freight can go down there that has to do with the motorsport that we're hauling. I got a load of ATVs in my trailer right now. I'm gonna show you in a second. Get the ramps here on this side. So, we have to be up front with you and say that when you join our motorsports division, it's not no touch freight. You will be setting up ramps, but it's not that difficult. I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. It's something to get you out of your truck and get you active and keep you moving. I always talk about, hey, you gotta keep walking, you gotta keep moving. This is one way where you can get paid to have a little workout and set up these ramps. It's, it's not too difficult. We're gonna set them up later in Kamloops or tomorrow. So I'll give you a look inside here. Open up the back. And we are looking for owner operators to come help us with this. Okay. So you see, we got two levels. I've only got one on the top at the back here. But you can go all the way to the front, two levels. So I've got four on the bottom, one on the top. And that's what you'd be hauling. And those ramps there, hook onto here. And in the belly box on this side, remember I was telling you is for hold other components and stuff. There's also pieces for the ramps to set up the second level because you'll need to put braces in the center, right? I'll show you this all when I set it up. That would be our motorsport division. If you own a truck, you're an owner operator in Alberta or British Columbia, you wanna come help us out with this? We could use your help, Got lots of work. You'd be mostly staying in the Western Prairie provinces and British Columbia and the Northwestern US. But you know, there's the option and opportunity to go elsewhere too and go further than that. But uh, the opportunities are there to be home most weekends as well. So I'm not trying to do an ad or anything right now. That's, that's not what this is. I'm just showing you what I'm hauling today and why I'm out here in this region. It's for the Big Rig Expo and it's for this division. So not trying to give you guys an ad, but I figure I may as well slip that in there. Show you guys a little bit what we do here. 
Okay, I'm just gonna go and check, double check the load in here and everything, make sure everything's still secure, and we're gonna head out on the road. I'm trying to get to Kamloops today yet to deliver. We'll see if I can uh, get there today. It'll probably be first thing tomorrow morning, but we're gonna try our best to get there today yet. Here we are. before they close. I should be there around like 3.30 to 4 o'clock and they close at 5.30, so that's perfect. We'll get three of those machines off today in Kamloops. The last two go to Williams Lake. Coming up to BC. There's the sign. Beside the welcome sign, as if we even need something like that, right? Brake check. Let's check our brakes. How about it? Let's make sure we're not going to go flying down the hill with no brakes. That wouldn't be very fun. Well, it would be fun on the way down as long as you don't hit anybody. It's just it wouldn't be so much fun when you hit that runaway lane or if you end up hitting something. That that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Good excuse to get out and stretch your legs. You gotta mark this in your logs as brake check, just so you know, when you're in the mountains and you uh, you stop at one of these, it has to show on your log book that you stopped here, on duty, not driving, uh, brake check. All right, so I'm gonna put myself here, on duty, not driving, brake check. Scroll down a little bit to find it. There you go, brake check. So know why I stopped when they look at my logs. Okay, and then what I do first is I bleed my air tanks. You can either just tap your brake like this or you can go out and actually pull the string. Bring it down to uh, the point where the alarm comes on because that alarm should come on. There's the red light already. And there's the other red light and you can hear it going ding, ding, ding. So that means the alarms are working, the lights are working. Okay, now you can idle up your truck. Let that air compressor fill up your tanks. You should bring it all the way back up to about 120 or so, wherever you have it set, usually about 120. And then you hear that psh, the blow off valve, which turns off the air compressor. And then you know everything is good. This is how what I do at every brake check, just to start, just to make sure my air system is working. And you already see the bottom air tank is filled up where the light has turned off. This one's going to turn off right away. It's filling up this one first. And then it, this one sort of fills up slower. That's the primary air, that's the secondary air. It must just be how they have it, uh, how they have it going in there. That light is going to turn off very soon. Any second. Come on now. There it is. Good. So we know that part of it's working. So now I'm going to go out and do a walk around and check my brakes. Uh, make sure that the slack adjusters are adjusted properly. Uh, make sure my brake pads are there. Because believe it or not, there's been trucks pulled in. You've seen them on Facebook, right? These pictures, those DOT pictures of these trucks that get pulled in for an inspection and they have no brake pads. <laughs> simple thing to check just make sure your brake pads are there if you can see them sometimes they're enclosed in dust guards and stuff but hey you just do a walk around check make sure your tires are filled with air but whatever you do to check to make sure your truck is safe to go down the mountain you do have to show that on your log book so if you get pulled in for an inspection and they want to see your logs they're going to want to see that on duty time that you actually stopped here for brake check so many guys they just pull in here stop for like two seconds and then just keep going well they're gonna be able to tell you only stopped here for two seconds or if you didn't even change your duty status it's gonna show that you didn't even stop at all 
and you just flew right by and they're gonna know that and then you can get a ticket and somebody are gonna get to hurt in their bank account real bad all right we're waiting for that sound you can see that the tanks have evened out now the primary air is about 110 secondary air is the same one hey another side note i can make about these brake checks I mean, I'm a prairie boy and I know this, but some people who drive through here need to be reminded. A brake check is not a rest area and is definitely not a place you stop to sleep. Every night when I, when I do come through here and you need to pull in here to check your brakes because it's a legal obligation, it's all packed up with guys sleeping and there's nowhere to stop to check your brakes. That's a problem. You're not supposed to sleep in the brake check. Okay, we're waiting for it anytime now. There we go, you hear that? All right, what's this guy doing here? Oh, okay, I thought he was gonna block me. That's an, there was all that, okay. Yeah, it's filling up in here now. See, this is what I mean, it fills up quick. So I did this part of my brake check. I'm gonna do the quick walk around, check the brakes physically, and we gotta get out of here because this place is gonna fill up and other guys need to come in and check their brakes. They can't just drive past. They have to pull in, so we can't plug the area up. I gotta go. I just check my trailer brakes and do a tug test one more time before I leave here. Brakes work, trailer brakes work and they release. Okay, let's go.
almost said cold in Colorado again. Uh, quickly pull in here, go around, park with these guys. There's a Tim Hortons right next door. And I'm also uh, gonna go and double check the load, make sure everything in there hasn't moved or make sure it's all still tied down properly. road for 329 kilometers.
and we're in Williams Lake. It's the following morning. Yesterday at Kamloops was so rushed. I got there right during rush hour and traffic was buzzing all over the place. We had to get those machines off and I had to get out of there as fast as possible. So we'll finish off today's video here in Williams Lake the following morning while I unload my last two machines. Okay, so they're not here yet. They'll be here in about an hour. I'm gonna be ready for them when, they're, when they arrive. We've got the top level put away. Remember we had a machine up there that got delivered in Kamloops. So once that got delivered, I just set up both sets of ramps for that. Uh, and I put the floor away. That's why you see these bars on the floor right now. As soon as I get these machines off of here, I take all of these and these load securements and straps, and I bring them, stack them up against the front of the trailer, nice and neat. There's two more in there. I'm just gonna drive them right off. That's how we get those off the trailer. So I have another set of two ramps under there yet. You can see that's for the second level. I was really hoping to be able to show you that, but like I said, I was in the middle of traffic, really busy, and they came out and helped me. I was out of there really quick, but I had to get out of there because of traffic. So uh, on this side, in the belly box here, we have the rest of the ramp set up. It makes it really easy. Undo those. Undo this here. There we go. Let's see, lift it up. We can hook this onto there. That stays open, right? And under here is the rest of that ramp set up. So you got the two posts, the cross member and the bottom to hold the bottom together. It's kind of hard to show you, but uh, that's what uh, holds up the second set of ramps. So there is a little bit of work involved. When you uh, pull dry vans, it's not just barn door swinging. You're not just a door swinger. It's a lot of physical work, but it's not too difficult. I mean, it's not hard to do. It's just enough to get you out of your seat, get your heart pumping a bit. It'll keep you healthy and help you live longer. It's really good for you, actually. There we go. I'm just gonna unload these, and then I'm gonna clean up this trailer, like I said. Bring all those bars, stack them against the front to secure them up there. Let's get these on the ground. Let's get these out of the trailer, and we'll be ready and waiting for them when they arrive here to work. And we can just sign some paperwork, and I can book it back to Calgary. So there's their machines all ready for them when they arrive. Now I've got to get those ramps secured under there and clean up this trailer and get all of this, uh, all of these straps and everything all organized and put away neatly at the front. And it'll be a uh, regular dry van. I don't have a load taking me back to Calgary. No time for that. I have to get back tonight. I have 900 kilometers to do tonight. Yeah, about six, a little under 600 miles, 550 miles to do. And uh, gotta get back to the truck show or uh, an expo or a job fair. I think it's more of a job fair. I don't really know. I've never been to this thing. So uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I'll bring you along and we'll, we'll, we'll see what's there. I don't exactly know what a big rig expo all entails. Uh, we're gonna find out together. But thanks for hanging out with me today. I almost forgot, I have to end this video and start tomorrow's video so you have something to watch tomorrow. Okay, so don't forget to subscribe, tune in tomorrow so that uh, you don't miss it. It'll be pretty scenic, it's a beautiful day for trucking. Look at this, not a cloud in the sky. And we got the mountains out here, not so big here, but we're gonna get back to the big Rockies later today. There'll be, uh, or in tomorrow's video, sorry to confuse you. Come and hang out tomorrow as well. Uh, I'll post it at 4 p.m. Central Time. I'm in Pacific time right now, so that'll be 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's gonna be a beautiful day and a beautiful trucking experience going through the mountains. I love it in summertime. Wintertime's a different story. We won't talk about that. Summertime, it's gonna be a good day. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care and drive safe.